Hey guys, so I've got something of a slightly different type of distribution to share with you today. I am trying out one of the first alpha images of Lubuntu Next. So for those of you that have been following the Lubuntu news rather closely, there is this hope that the Lubuntu distribution moves from LXDE across to LXQT. So they're two different desktop environments. They are closely linked and effectively LXQT is the QT version of LXDE which is built using the GTK toolkit. So it's been a rather interesting development which has been unfolding for the last couple of years now and to be honest I thought around the last couple of releases that they may have abandoned the project. GTK may for some reason have found itself more viable um, but it did seem that as um, a lot of people are involved with Lubuntu and LXDE and so forth. They wanted to see this desktop environment into the, you know, when they were looking to their future goals. They looked at GTK3 and saw a lot of problems using that toolkit. So LXQT seemed like a better toolkit to go on to a lot of people. So it certainly seemed, um, it certainly seemed like a good idea to at least explore that path. And this is uh, LXQT itself. This is the first alpha image of Lubuntu. Um, LXQT itself has been around for quite some time. You could get it as a community version of the Manjaro distribution, uh, which is quite good. Quite a lot of work has gone into this. And I've always thought LXQT was, was quite a good variant or quite a good um, distribute, like a QT variant of LXDE. I always thought it was a good desktop environment in its own right. It looked nice, it performed well and all that kind of stuff. But it did feel very new, like it did feel that uh, it needed more themes, for example, and more community involvement, which you can really only get over time, if, if truth be known, and with a degree of consistency. I think one of the problems that we're going to see from GNOME and uh, the GTK developments is that because they chop and change so many of their rules and, and methods and all that kind of stuff, they're going to find people will lose enthusiasm with developing themes for them because it's just like it's it's a constant game of trying to keep up. Whereas, you know, it, like if I was de de designing themes, I would love the idea that I could design a theme for GTK2 and it would transfer across perfectly to GTK3 and GTK4, could even possibly be, you know, used and adopted by QT and so forth. But it just seems so difficult to keep up with toolkits and and then people complain about electron apps well if i was developing an app for linux and i wanted to look at like i saw all this politics or, and and uh complications around gtk and qt yeah i'd totally go with electron it's really quite good at cross-platform apps and you know if you are developing apps you do want as more more people to use it than less and therefore you know i think a lot of app developers would look at the, the cross-platform options, look at Electron and see Electron to be considerably superior to either QT or GTK. And also, on, you know, on top of that, you look at, um, like, if you go into, like, LibreOffice or whatever and uh, just type up a document or just get a document and save it as an HTML file. Just go file, save as HTML, right? And then look at the code that it generates. It generates pretty lean code. Like, you can actually develop um, an HTML interface for, like, a couple of hundred kilobytes like really seriously like you, you can get html to be really lightweight the problem is the browser that's built around it the electron framework itself but there's nothing to say that over years we can't come up with uh, a you know an alternative to switch out to or even you know like slim it down a lot so um i think there are more options there with the cross-platform stuff than there is with the linux native stuff but anyway uh, i am uh digressing uh so i've been playing around with this alpha image now there are they claim at every turn that the, this is an alpha image. It's it's not stable. It's not, you know, there, there are going to be bugs. Do not be surprised if there are bugs. In fact, expect bugs. And there have been one or two, but for the most part, this is looking really promising. This is looking really good. And I think that the, like, the, you know, again, this is alpha. I have had issues. So you may notice if you're particularly eagle-eyed that down in my system tray, I have a... Um, battery manager which isn't the uh, using the same icon as the native lxqt battery manager um a power manager rather so i installed up um for the first time it didn't actually detect the battery the battery worked but there wasn't like a measurer it didn't measure so i did i, I tweaked around with a few settings there and to, to get that working it didn't work directly out of the box i needed to switch it on as it were so it wasn't a particularly 
a uh, big issue there. And I did an upgrade as soon as I boot. Um, and I think an upgrade may have solved that problem as well. It was sort of in my setting up process and I was just setting everything around. But it uh, that was an issue that, that res was resolved pretty quickly. However, the reason I'm using the XFCE power manager is because after about 10 minutes of in inactivity, the screen goes blank. And that's using the native um, power manager for this. And there didn't seem to be any amount of settings that I could change to get rid of that. So I did the the shortcut work around for now, which was just get the XFCE power manager in here to, to do the job. And that seems to, for the most part, have um, gotten rid of the issues. The issue wasn't that it blanked after 10 seconds, uh, 10 minutes rather, of idle. It um, did so if I was in like a full screen application. So if I put on like a YouTube video, full screened it, it wouldn't suspend um, the the screen um, going black. So that's basically what, what compelled me to change it. And since then, it's been fine. I it, Again, these are the kind of bugs that would would you'd expect to be wrinkled out by the final release. These are these this is par for the course. Um, but in terms of other bugs, things going wrong where they shouldn't, um, errors and so forth, I other than that, nothing. Like I'm quite uh, quite surprised, quite, you know, it's very promising that, that it actually seems to be put together rather nice. Now it is a bit rough around the edges, but again, alpha build, first distribution, you got to be forgiving of these kind of things. So uh, let's have a look at the applications that it comes with. This is again, this is not super important, but um, because installing applications is easy enough. So it comes with, I installed KeyPass X. Um, I always, almost always tend to do that. It comes with the PC, um, PC Man FM File Manager. This is, I believe it's like the Qt version. There's a Qt version of PC File Manager. Um, yeah, PC File Manager, PC Man FM Qt. This is a Qt version. So if you are running KDE, there was one time, a long time ago, I was running the KDE desktop and Dolphin was doing something that I really didn't like. And uh, I switched it out with the Qt version of of PC Man FM, and it's you know it's a good solid um, file manager. It's it, it's not as full featured as some of the ones with the more you know the larger desktop environments. Nor would you expect it to be. It's fast. It's lean. It does everything you'd expect a file manager to do. Even you know you can even explore networks and all that kind of stuff. Doesn't look too bad. I'd be happy with it on any desktop environment. Uh, it comes interestingly enough with the Cupzilla browser. So this is a Qt based browser. I have never had much success with Cupzilla on anything other than a Qt desktop environment. But other than this, I don't know why this was the last page I was uh, looking at. Tap to click for touchpads. Because actually, oh yeah, one of the things actually that reminds me. Um, yeah, touch to click actually worked out of the box on LXQt on Lubuntu for this. And so did the two finger scrolling, which is what I really like. Um, you can. It also has the scrolling where you scroll up and down the side um, of the laptop's touchpad, and that also gives you a. Uh, a you know, it, it comes basically with all of the features. It comes with the the right hand scroll bar function on touchpads. It comes with the two finger touch, um, and it comes with tap to click. If you wanted to change these. At this stage, I believe you have to go into a config file. But when you are playing around with Lubuntu and LSDE and LSQT, you do expect once in a blue moon to um, to have to go into to config files. That's just the the way the game is played sometimes. But it's not intimidating at all. It's very easy, very straightforward in that regards. So I'm going to cl close down Cupzilla. Cupzilla worked fine here, works fine. It looks like a, a damn good browser. The reason I don't do more with it is is very simply because it only works well on Qt uh, on Qt based desktop environments. So it does seem very much like it is a you know it, it fits that niche market, but outside of that, that 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 niche market, it just seems to fall apart quite badly. So I did do uh, I did install uh, Firefox as you can see here. I'm on my um, Mastodon profile, LinuxRocks.online forward slash at Chrisware. I've recently moved over from the main instance. Um, if you guys are looking for a good open source federated social network, check out LinuxRocks.online. It's just a nice little corner of the internet where we chat a lot about Linux and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, if you want to, that's probably the best place apart from Twitter to get a hold of me. But that aside, uh, Firefox installs and works fine straight out of the box there. So um, what else have we got? Synaptic Package Manager. Oh yeah, so I've put this up because I just wanted to give you a demonstration about what GTK apps would look like. So this is Synaptic Package Manager uh, and it's using the um, Adwaita themes as a default GTK3 theme. Um, 
it looks fine but it did it, it, uh, one of the reasons it does look fine if I pull up say for example PC man file manager again there we go um, it looks very similar it looks very same it looks coherent this is using the breeze theme whereas this is using add waiter so they are compatible if they weren't then you know th there would be a distinct visual difference I don't know how much you care if you're going to be using Lubuntu but there is like it does seem that if I was to to place a criticism on Lubuntu and LSQT here because I'm kind of sort of uh, treating them one and the same here uh, it would be the the visual continuity between Qt4 Qt5 because if I take out Qt4 is simple screen recorder and as you can see it's got a slightly so this is what I've got here this is a slightly different color scheme to for example Qt5 which is the PC man FM if I change in the settings in the control panel uh, to change my desktop theme and my the theme of my widgets and my icons on my applications it would change just everything under GT uh, under Qt5 uh, but uh, it would change everything under Qt5 but it wouldn't change stuff that I believe is under Qt4 or any of the GTKs so there is that and if the majority of your programs are going to be running outside of that toolkit you may not have as much control over uh, themes and what they look like as you might want although if you're running a lightweight distribution you may not care and also it's you know it is something that you can actually fix yourself but you again you may be having to install something like LX appearance which is a, an application which tries to make um, a, a little bit more of a, um, a matching between the GTK and QT themes as well so there are options there but basically all in all like the the bare bones of what you want out of this distribution it's all here um, some of the application choices are you know like are yet to be um, fully ported over to Qt or, or, or worked with for example synaptic package manager um, comes with LibreOffice I think LibreOffice again uses the uh, ad waiter theme comes with the Qt transmission which is just a Qt version of transmission client really good comes with LibreOffice which you might not necessarily expect for a lightweight distribution I'm going to go out on a limb here and say it's probably one of the better choices I think Abbey Word and uh, Numeric first of all they are GTK based but then again so is LibreOffice uh, but also they're just not as stable as they really ought to be I do notice there are a few things in here which I don't necessarily recognize uh, and I've only been playing around with this distribution maybe for for over the weekend so um, I might stay with it for a few more days before I decide to try something else um, if you guys have any suggestions I'm always happy to hear it but please bear in mind that it does have to be a distribution that I vaguely need to work with on a somewhat daily basis so it has to be some some kind of like vaguely all-purpose uh, distribution but I'm pretty flexible like I say I'm working off of an alpha image here uh, okay so all in all this distribution is, is looking really promising for a uh, 1710 release um, I it, it looks like it's going to be released as Lubuntu next and then the next version of Lubuntu will just be um, Lubuntu with the LXDE desktop so it, it looks like you're going to have two images this time around I could be wrong on that one but it does look like you've got options for now I don't know if this is going to be going on in the future It's it seems like a bit of a stretch to support LXDE and LXQT just like a little bit too much work Just I would uh, pick one and run with it which probably would what be, would what would probably be what they do uh, but all in all, uh, whether or not they decide to go with uh, go back to LXDE, whether or not this, or whether or not they they decide to press on with LXQT, uh, I have a great deal of support for this distribution either way. To be honest, whatever their choices, I have faith in um, in the process now, and this just goes to show it. Um, Lubuntu has always been a distribution which has helped me out. Like it's been my go-to distribution for something that's running on legacy hardware. I've put it on people's um, laptops before who just want a functional but bare bones operating system, something where they just click, you know, start internet web browser or start office, you know, word processor. If you just need a basic system that does that, like there is no reason why LXDE, LXQT, Lubuntu can't fill that role. So yes, it doesn't look as nice as other distributions. Although this actually comes with Compiz 
um, window, you know, it comes with the uh, Compiz Compositor, Compositor, um, as well as Compton as well. So you can have uh, composite windows. You have nice little shadows and effects and all that kind of stuff around. I've turned them off because I want something that runs faster and I don't necessarily care for the fancy shadows as much. Yeah, I like it when a distribution looks nice, especially when I'm showing it off to other people. But for my day-to-day -day laptop that I just watch YouTube videos and, you know, read Wikipedia articles on and whatnot, this does everything I need it to do and it does it at a very low set of system resources. In fact, just as a comparison, um, the amount of times my fans need to spin up uh, in this laptop in order to keep it cool are substantially fewer on this LXQT desktop than they were on the GNOME 3 and Turgos install. Now that's obvious, you know, for obvious reasons, GNOME is a significantly bigger desktop environment, but this, uh, these last few days have really hit home to me how much of a difference that desktop environment uh, can make. And I may be aware that I might have said some things uh, contrary to that in previous videos, but I think this is, you know, looking at LXQT now and looking what it's got to offer um, and looking where Lubuntu is. Uh, yeah, like expectations are high. This is, this is, you know, I, I, I th uh, you know, and just everything is just so much more responsive on this laptop than it was under, under GNOME. So I got to say, this is looking, this is looking to shape up to be a really good distribution, even at this early alpha stage. This is, you know, I, I, if they said this was a beta, I would be, uh, I, I would, I would accept that. And I've still got two updates that I've still got to, uh, to install. So it could get better yet. Um, if you guys want to spin it up in a virtual machine, I do recommend that. Um, it seems to be running quite, quite well on bare metal. So, um, Bravo there, but they are of course building off the rather established Ubuntu base and even the Ubuntu Alpha these days has a significant number of people working on it, so there's that. Anyway, I'm going to let you go now, but I've got to say this is, uh, yeah, this this gets two thumbs up from me, as does pretty much every Ubuntu release that I've ever uh, I've ever reviewed, and, and part of that is simply because um, it's it's a very basic distribution. Like they they don't try and do too much. They do a small amount of things uh, at a very low level, and they do it really, really, really well. You know, it, it's no, um, no, you know, not too many bells and whistles. It's straight down to brass tacks, and that's what I like about it. So that's about it for me today. I guess um, don't forget to check out my Mastodon, my Mastodon rather. I'll put a link to that, of course, down in the description below. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.